In 1915, the U.S. government woke up to the fact that it was no longer the biggest influence in American society. The film industry was now also shaping America's people and their attitudes. Concerned about this new influence, Congress contemplated laws that would determine what Hollywood could produce. And the Supreme Court ruled that cinema was not protected by the First Amendment. Hoping to head off further interference by politicians, the film studios formed the Motion Picture Producers and Distributors of America, which would later become the MPAA. Its mission was to lobby Congress on behalf of the film studios. But this hardly ended their troubles. 1939 is arguably one of the best years Hollywood ever had. But none of the great films of that year mentioned the war that had just begun. Hollywood was going out of its way to avoid referring to the fighting in Europe. Americans were wary of entering yet another European conflict. Even though there was no appetite for war movies, politicians in Washington still feared that Hollywood producers would use their medium to push public opinion toward the war. In 1939, Warner Brothers broke ranks to make Confessions of a Nazi Spy. In 1940, MGM produced The Mortal Storm. The films angered the Nazi government, but it was Washington that took action, reportedly warning Hollywood to stop making films that might inflame tensions. Even Mr. Smith Goes to Washington was seen as subversive by the U.S. government when it was released in 1939. While it's considered a patriotic film today, Congressman then bristled at the notion of showing corruption in Washington. The film was given no permits to shoot on government lands or monuments, which director Frank Capra did anyway. And they were barred from portraying Boy Scouts, being forced to use fictional Boy Rangers instead. Upon viewing the film, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Kingdom, Joseph Kennedy, sent a message to the head of the MPAA. I have just seen Mr. Smith goes to Washington, he wrote. I consider this one of the most disgraceful things I have ever seen done to our country. To permit this film to be shown in foreign countries and to give people the impression that anything like this could happen in the United States Senate is to me nothing short of criminal. I am sending a copy of this wire to the President of the United States. Ironically, that ambassador's son, John F. Kennedy, would cite the film as one of the reasons he would be drawn to politics seven years later. Despite a contentious start, the relationship between Hollywood and Washington would warm up during World War II. Studios were happy to produce propaganda for the war effort and would loan out their stars for tours to sell war bonds. Some movie stars, like Jimmy Stewart, Clark Gable, Henry Fonda, and Robert Montgomery, would even enlist. But the warm relationship was not to last. After the surrender of Germany and Japan, Washington viewed communism as the next great threat to America, and lawmakers decided that Hollywood was again not to be trusted. In 1947, the House Un-American Activities Committee held hearings into alleged communist propaganda and influence in movies. Witnesses were brought in, whether willingly or not, and questioned about their politics. More importantly, they were asked to name names of known or suspected communists. Actors like John Wayne and Ronald Reagan were more than happy to do their part in cleaning up the rumored red menace in Hollywood, but others resisted. Ten screenwriters, including Dalton Trumbo, were convicted of contempt of Congress and were even jailed. Upon their release, like many other suspected communists, they found themselves blacklisted from work. The blacklist would end 10 years later, but the lasting effect still lingers. While there are no longer hearings into the Americanness of Hollywood film studios, movies are still an easy target for many politicians. They are still blamed for society's ills, whether it be increased sexuality or violence and political pressure can still force films off the silver screen. This video is brought to you by the Saturday Evening Post Digital Archives. 
Saturday Evening Post members can explore our 200-year-old archive for only $15 a year. Subscribe today.